I hope to be big on YouTube at some point. Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, on January 21st, Vesa did a, a video on how to make your first co-pilot in SharePoint, showing the, the, the whole site one. So go back and watch that. Not right now. Hold, hold tight here. But, but sometime go back and watch that. And, and David's going to put the link in the chat there. Uh, but this is going to be kind of a continuation of that. But I did want to cover a couple of things that the Vesa covered in his session, just to kind of r remind everybody. The co-pilots in SharePoint are no-code solutions. They're not even low-code. They're no-code. If you were technically savvy enough to join this meeting, you know enough to create a co-pilot agent in SharePoint. Or if you were able to navigate to YouTube and find this video, you were also technically savvy enough to make these agents here. Super easy to use. Anybody can do it. No code whatsoever. Um, and they will consume all of your SharePoint data. Now, not all of it, there's a caveat there, and David's going to have a link in the, the chat to a fact that covers some of this. But think of this as a way to consume like your office data, your Word files, your Excel files, PowerPoints, things like that out of your document libraries. List data is not available to Copilot. They say yet, but I just when you're crafting your solutions, just think about this as document libraries. And your pages library is not available. So your, your pages and your site. So think of it as your collaboration uh, content. Um, like Vesa showed in his video, when you create a site, an agent has already created, a whole site agent is already created. But luckily for us, sites can have many agents. So we're going to create an additional agent. We're going to hone it. We're going to craft it a little bit to make it do uh, what we want. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Before we get too far along, I want to show you all my vanity slides so that you can contact me with all of your questions and all of that. Uh, this is me. I'm in all these calls. I'm in the Tuesday calls all the time. So whenever you want to chat, just hit me up. Uh, I'm a consultant at some Praxis. I've been doing the SharePoint thing for a while. Uh, you can hit me up on the socials. I'm at Todd Clint everywhere, Instagram, uh, wherever. And I've got a website. And let's jump right into the uh the demo okay so we're sitting here in sharepoint and we've got a sharepoint site up i've called this one the copilot test site so i can never forget what it does and the only thing that you need to get this done is a license inside of sharepoint and a copilot license so you'll notice i've got the little copilot thing up there um Anybody that can create a file inside of SharePoint can create one of these copilot agents. These agents are just files. They are dot agent files. And these files are plain text files or JSON files. So creating one of these is as easy as creating a Word document or whatever. So as you're thinking about your governance and, and how these agents show up, that's something to keep in mind. Anybody that has permission to create a file can create one of these agents. And uh, where should you create these agents? You can create them anywhere. My guidance to you is that you should create your agent, again, this .agent file that gets created. You should create it as close to the data that you want it to consume as possible. So right now I'm sitting at the root of the, the site so I could create one here and it would cons consume the data from the whole site. I could also go into one of my document libraries and uh, can, I can still create one here. So I've got a document library here that has HR data in it, employee handbooks, security presentations, things like that. I've got a document library here that has statements of work in it. So I can make an agent that looks over those and helps me create my next statement of work. Or I've got a document library here that has product information. Uh, so if I want to ask questions about products, compare them, things like that. Wherever I want to have this agent do its work is where I should uh, click that and create that agent. Now, you're probably uh, saying to yourself, you know, this is bad IA. I shouldn't have all of this stuff in one site. I should have a product site, uh, statements of work site, and whatever. You're not wrong. That's much better information architecture than what I've got. But in reality, we all have sites like this. So it's good to know how to handle uh, these different things. But for me, I want to create one um, with this. And so now we're to the how. We've got the, the who. Anybody can create one. We've got the, uh, the where. Again, wherever your data is at, the how, we're going to click this. Now, by default, we've got this agent icon right here. And we could ask it questions, but we want to create a new one. So we want to create an agent. Couldn't be easier. By default, it gives us the name of the location that we um that we wanted that we created in. So it's calling it documents agent. That's a really bad name. It's just named after the documents library over there. Um, 
One thing to keep in mind is these agents are cross-site, so I can move this agent around. So I don't want to have it be called documents because every site has a document library called documents. So you don't want to have confusion as to which one it's going to be in. I will show you later how to rename this. It's super simple. Uh, by Todd Clint. Again, this is just a document, so that's just the owner. The source, this is where I'm at. So this is kind of why I told you to create your agent where your data's at, because it's going to create that as a source automatically. Now, when Vesa did his video, he showed off that he could create an agent in less than 20 seconds. It really only took him like 10 or 15. I would argue that this is even faster, because if you look down here, this agent is already ready. Just by clicking that button, the agent is ready to go. I can click open agent here. I can start interacting with my HR documents just as it is. Uh, but if I know the people on this call, the PNP crowd, we're not that kind of folks. We see an a, uh, uh, an edit button like here. We got to click in there. We got to see what's what's going on in there. So when we click that, we get in here. We have three different tabs across the top, and I'm going to cover each of those a little bit. Um, the first one is the name. So I talked about how it's just named after the document library we created it in. So this one's called Documents. Um, I like something a little more friendly. So I, I want the, the folks in HR to have a good face. So I created this one, and I'm calling it Helen from HR. So this is the Helen bot. Helen's gonna answer all of your HR questions. And you can see over here on the right, we can test this agent in real time, which with AI is very handy. And as soon as I renamed it, it showed up over here. So that's really helpful to let you uh, see what you're doing. Now I can also give it a better icon. So I don't like the, the bland T. So I had ChatGPT make me an icon. I just went into ChatGPT and I'm like, hey, I'm making an agent. It's called Helen from HR, make me a picture of Helen from HR, and this is what it gave me. So I've got an, uh, a friendly little face over there, and then a description. So this is what folks are gonna see when they're picking their agent in SharePoint. This is the description they're gonna see. So make sure that it's got something uh, you know, informational that'll help them pick it. So I've got, this is Helen in HR, ask her all of your HR related questions. Uh, you can't stump her, and I can't type apparently. That's okay. So whatever you want to put. Now that doesn't show up over here because that shows up in the picker on the right uh, over there. So let's go ahead and save this. Mahmood uh, mentioned that you're going to be able to edit these in Copilot Studio soon. If you try to do it now, it just tells you it's coming soon. They're building anticipation. It's, uh, you know, they're, they're getting us excited about it. I can't wait to see what they do. Uh, once we get in there. Okay, so we've got this saved. Now, one thing I told you is it's just a file. So we can go look and see that file right here. We can see this is the, the, the document library with all of our HR data in it. And now we've got this Helen from HR file right there. So that's where it starts out. It doesn't stay there. There's excitement. Helen's going to move. She's going to pack her bags. Uh, but I'll show you that here in a couple of uh, couple of slides. So now we go to our sources. So by default, it adds the source where you create the agent. And again, if you create it at the front page of the, the site, then it creates the whole site. But since I created it in the document library, um, it's going to add that document library. I can come in. I can add more places. So let's say I want to also add my products because why not? Or so this will add the whole products thing. Um, I can also just add individual files if I wanted. These can be grounded in a site, a library, a folder, or a file. So any of those four or any combination of those. Up to 20. You get 20 sources in here. The other thing that I wanted to mention is if you've got some more HR data in another site, you can paste the URL to another SharePoint site in here, and it will let you browse the other SharePoint site. So your sources can be multiple sites. Um, and so I'm going to leave that here. Actually, I'm going to add one so that I can save it again. So I'm going to add this statement of work for Alan Smithy right there. We'll add that so you can see. And then if you want to remove anything, you can do it there. Uh, so I will save that again. And again, um, you can test this immediately. So as soon as you put a source in, you can ask your AI questions and see what uh, what it says. So the last tab here, behavior, again, just kind of tells your, your bot how to behave. So I want to put a fun uh, description in here. This is what your users will see with, for their welcome prompt. So yes, and Mahmood mentions that if you add a hub site, all of the uh, the, the sites that roll up to that are included in that source. That's a very good tip. Yeah. So here is a welcome message. It shows up over here. So this is what your users will see when they fire this up. One of my favorite parts of this is the starter prompts. And I like these starter prompts for two reasons. Uh, one of them is whenever I'm using agents, you know, Stefan talked about um, how you can get uh, 
you know, blind as to the way to, to use things. And sometimes you just need something to help you out. I like these starter prompts because they give me an idea what kind of questions to ask different agents. So I like putting those in so that this gives your, your users kind of lets you prime the pump a little bit, kind of guide them down the way that you want them to use your agent. The other thing is any of these that you put in, your users can just click. So if they want to know what the PTO policy is, they can just click it and it populates it down here. If they want to know if they can bring their cat to work, they can populate that and it'll just bring it in down there. And finally, we have the option to give a instruction for the agent. So this is secret little instructions. Uh, if you've used other LLMs, you'll might recognize this as a system prompt, but this is telling the agent how to interact with the users. So I'm telling it, hey, your name is Helen, please provide accurate information about the questions that are asked um, and use a friendly tone when responding. So that uh, guides that on how to, to respond to your users. I did try to make it respond with a mean tone. It would not do that. The co-pilot would just give me an error when uh, when I did that. I was able to get Helen to reply with a snarky tone though. Uh, so if you want a little sass with your HR, you can, you can do that. Uh, Chris asks, is there a way to deploy this to a test group before publishing it for all users? There sure is, and that is a great lead up. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Um, so now we've got our agent done and we've saved it out. So let's see what happens when we use it. So we've got Helen from HR here. I think I already asked that if we can bring our cat to work, but let's try again, see what happens. It's coming up. It's coming through. Yes, you can bring your cat to work. Now, the great thing about that is not only does it tell you you can bring your cat to work, but it gives you your references as Copilot does. So I like that. Um, so Paul is mentioning, did you know that you can at mention this in Teams? You can, and I will show you how to do that here in just a second. The copy the link in Teams, so you can do this. You can copy it. You can paste it into Teams. You can share this with other people. So Chris asked about that. One of the things that you can do is set as approved. So right now, this Helen from HR file just sits in here. And since it's a file, another cool thing that I can do is it's got version history. So I was saving it along the way as I created it. If I mess this agent up completely, I screw it up or I delete over my, my starter prompts or something, I can just revert back to a, a previous version. But our agent, Helen, is perfect just as she is. So uh, let's go ahead and approve her. So if I approve her, a couple of fun things happen. So set as an approved agent. Yes, version history, hooray. Okay, so it says that it's gonna move her. It's gonna, so you can see in the background there, Helen got moved. Helen got a promotion. She's now got a corner office and Helen is now in the site assets, co-pilots approved folder. So that is one fun thing that happens. So that's something to know is you're playing with these and you've been used to interacting with her uh, by clicking in her in the, um, the document library. Now she's going to be in here. But another fun thing that happens is when you open up Copilot, now she shows up here on the top. So Chris, to answer your question, before you approve her, she's going to only show up in the document library and you're going to have to click her to use her. So that's how your test users will use her. When you're ready to roll it out, then you approve it and it shows up as the approved in this list, which is right there. So that's two things that are cool. Um, another fun thing is once I've got her chosen and she's approved, I can make her the site default. So since we've got this as an HR kind of site, I can go in here and I can say, make this the default. And now when people open up Copilot, they get Helen by default, they get the friendly face. And uh, then if they want to pick another Copilot, they can do that. So the last thing I wanted to mention about governance is if you've got a few of these and they're approved or not approved or whatever, if you want to delete them, the only thing you need to do is just delete the file. And that is uh, where delete go. There you go. So you can delete the file. The other thing you can do if you're the curious sort is you can download it. Again, it's a JSON file. And so you can open up, you can actually edit it and um, upload it again. Or if you really like this, to, to Chris's question about uh, test users, you can create it in one location. You can download it and upload it to another site and it will work perfectly. You can, you know, it'll show up in there. You can approve it. You can do all that stuff. So the the governance and the uh, the workflow is a little odd, but it's just a file. So you just treat it like a file. Um, okay. Do you have to have a co-pilot license to view these agents? Yes, you have to have a co-pilot license. If you don't have a co-pilot license, that doesn't pop up. Now, the good news is if you've got to pay as you go or whatever, uh, it will all work. 
So I think that is my 15 minutes. David, let me actually bring up my vanity slide one more time in case anybody wants to get a hold of me. And I think it's back to the LA studios. Thank you.